This is the history of the video cameras that I've purchased in the past. The one on the left I got in 1995. The one in the middle I got in 2005. And the one on the far right I purchased in 2020, which is classified as a high def camera. And since I'm using this camera to film this, you're not going to see this camera again throughout the course of this video. When I purchased my newest camera, I also bought this 64 gigabyte micro disc, which can give me about 16 hours of recording time on this tiny little disc. I've actually never opened this up because I've been using a 16 gigabyte micro disc, which serves me just fine, gives me about four hours of recording time, and it seems to serve uh, all my needs. When I'm done with a video, I pop this disc out of the camera and I put it into a card reader. Um, more specifically, I use this uh, micro SD card reader, which slides into this slot. And then this side is a USB-A, and that slides into the port here and I can then transfer it to my computer which is fairly old. It's a 2010 MacBook. On this folder I've stored my most recent videos from the camera. After a few months I try to transfer them to an external hard drive for long-term storage. Every time I start or stop the record mode I end up getting another one of these video segments on the uh, SD drive. So then what I want to do is I want to merge them into one continuous video and edit out what I don't want. And so I open up a specific application which is the iMovie file. Once the iMovie file is open I select new project and then I name it. Then I select import movies and then I go to the files that I just showed you in the folder with all my camera movie segments. And then starting from the bottom I highlight the uh, segments that I want to transfer to this iMovie program. And then by clicking import, it sends these files to the iMovie program. It takes a while to import these files. Usually if it's f six minutes of files, it takes about three minutes to import them into this window. And then once it's imported them into this window, usually I select the entire file so that it appears in the section above. And if I've got three segments, I go back and I select the next file and drag it up here. And then I select the third file and drag it up here. And then I go through from the beginning and I start playing it back, which appears on this window. And then I um, cut out the pauses in my narration and eliminate parts of the video that are not useful. Once it's all done, I reviewed it and it looks good. Uh, the next step is to share the video, which then, when I click Export Movie, it tells me uh, where it wants to send it. I can change it to a different location. And then I click Export, and then it, um, then it takes a while to make it. If I've got a, a six-minute... Um, movie that I'm going to export. Uh, it takes about 12 minutes to uh, send the completed movie uh, to the folder where I've selected it. When I have a completed video, if I want to make a DVD out of it or play it on a larger screen, one way is to put it on a thumb drive such as this. Uh, this is a 16 gigabyte 
thumb drive and uh, as an example I've put a number of my biking videos on this it has a AV output which ends up in these three AV plugs which can plug into a TV set or a DVD recorder or some other electronic device. I can then navigate this to the files which gets me to the USB device. Now this is an MP4 player so I have USB uh, on this USB device I have MP4 files which are of videos I previously shot and so what I can do then is to play these to the TV screen or to a DVD recorder. I'm going to try a biking excursion and see how it goes. The first camera I had gotten, which is on the left, seems like it weighs like five pounds or more. Uh, it records images on a compact VHS tape and this tape once finished can then be ejected from the camera and it slid into a sort of an adapter and that adapter was the size of a VHS tape and would this would slide then into a VHS player which you could uh, play directly on the VHS, VHS player to a TV set. It also had a uh, AV out port which is another way using a cable to play the uh, the videos that it's on a that's on a tape that's still in the camera. The uh, the next camera I got would record to a DV cassette. The DV cassette was smaller in size than the previous VHS tape, and that would fit inside the camera. You could then eject the DV cassette and put in a new one so you could continue recording because it would have like 90 minutes uh, maximum recording length. Then if you wanted to transmit what was on the internal cassette there's three different ports here that could be used transmit the information and video out. I commonly use the uh, bottom port here for AV out. The recording medium for my newest camera is then this micro disc. This is the 64 gigabyte version which could probably record about 16 hours. I typically use the 16 gigabyte version which gets me about four hours of recording in my usual recording mode. The newest camera comes with this USB cord as a way of charging the camera. Uh, the camera has a um, USB-A cord as part of the handle and when it's time to charge you can simply plug the USB-A into this port. Another way of charging the battery or maintaining its power during use is by one of these batteries. You plug the USB-A port into this battery and just sort of hang it off to the side and it will provide additional power during a video filming if the uh, 
camera battery, battery is getting ready to run out of power. So I've used this on a number of occasions, like when I've got a, a bike video that's running over two hours, I'll pull over and plug in this battery and uh, continue on with my trip. My newest video camera has a viewing screen that's about one and a quarter inches high by two and a quarter inches wide. Additionally, it has a couple of ports on the outside of the camera. One is a mini HDMI port which expands to a full-size HDMI port which can then be plugged into a TV monitor so you can see exactly what you're filming. On the opposite side of the camera is a different type of uh, cable which has the familiar AV cables which could be plugged into a different sort of connection to transmit the AV information. Instead of getting a GoPro for my bicycle helmet I adapted the helmet and made a special bracket to hold the camera a quarter twenty bolt going through the helmet. I designed this little bracket to hold the older camera as well as the newer camera. The newer camera being perhaps one-third the weight. It's much easier to deal with but I can go either way with it taking a video of a bike trip in process.